the writer of the Gospel of Matthew recounts that Jesus called 12 disciples from different experiences and backgrounds. And he commissions them to spread the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near. And he gives them the authority to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. And after he calls and commissions them, he does something that I think we, we get a little bit impatient about. They don't go right out. Jesus gathers them for a training session. Because he has to teach the disciples how to be disciples in a world of oppression and domination. He wants to instruct them as the people of God how to navigate a cruel and broken world characterized by poverty, inequality, and exploitation. And the first lessons these new disciples must learn is not that every is not is that not everyone will welcome them. Not everyone will welcome the gospel that they preach. No, it is more likely that they will be persecuted. Those who commit their lives to this way of being, those who follow the way of Jesus, will face persecution. The empire will strike back. They will be hated. They will be betrayed. They will be flogged. They will be brought before the authorities. Everything the empire does to Jesus, it will do to them. Yet Jesus teaches them that they must take up their cross. And more than that, they must lose their lives for Jesus' sake. And no matter how bad it gets, and it is going to get bad, Jesus tells them, Jesus also assures them that he is with them. Jesus assures them that the presence of the Holy Spirit will give them the words and the strength to resist the empire. But here's the beauty of all of this, that even when they are beset on all sides, as Jesus' disciples, they are now a part of God's body. They are laborers in God's vineyard. They are members of God's new family. So in a family, how did this family come about? It is going to come about by those who welcome them. That when the world gets so cold, they can have their assurance that new family and new community can be built by being welcomed. So Jesus says, whoever welcomes them, welcomes Jesus. And whoever welcomes Jesus, welcomes the one who sent Jesus. Everything they do, everywhere they go, anywhere they show up, they are connected to Jesus. And anybody who welcomes them, is connected to Jesus. Oh, I want to put that out a little bit more clear. If you welcome the one who comes in the name of Jesus, you're welcoming Jesus. Let me put it this way. When the person who, of Jesus comes in your presence and you say, welcome, and you give them a, even a cold cup of water. You say, here, here. You are giving that cup of water to Jesus himself. Okay. You're not convinced. Whoever welcomes you, Jesus says, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Here's the thing. You may not know who it is is coming before you. And because you do not know, the best thing that you can do is welcome anyone who comes before you. And that's where the divine reward comes in. There is divine reward in the welcome 
of people of God. There is fullness of blessing in welcoming even the little ones of God, the disciples, these lowly ones who acknowledge Jesus as God with us are the very embodiment of the wideness of God's welcome. They won't get rich living this way. They won't live in luxury by choosing the way of hospitality, but they can depend on the bounty of God because somebody, somebody welcomed them. Oh, they will be rewarded by showing up and spreading the good news. And those who welcome them will be rewarded by accepting the good news. All those who embrace their mission will be rewarded. The humiliation of the cross will be overwhelmed by the blessings that will flow from God. Here's the thing. Hospitality is inextricably linked to the very heart of Jesus and to the presence of God. It is a testament to how giving and receiving in love and generosity flow out of the very identity of Jesus. God is love. Jesus is grace. It's all there. So when we welcome one another, we are welcoming Jesus in our very midst. Let me go a little bit further. If we do that, if we welcome all God's children, you see what I did there, if we welcome, if we welcome all God's children, we are being subversive. Let me clear it up there. We are committing an act of resistance every time we welcome the stranger. Because guess what? Every time we welcome the stranger, we have started to build a community is that much larger, that much more accepting, that much more creative. Everybody that walks through the door, when we do it, we tell the community out there, this is the way of God, not your way. It is subversive. Even the small act of giving the most vulnerable people in the land a cup of cold water shapes and influences the life of faith. It is the through acts of hospitality that the disciples themselves counter the empire's narrative that you must carry arms, that you must have a lot of money, that you must be well connected. No. Jesus said, go out among them and carry nothing with you. Oh, I, if I were in the crowd, I would say, Jesus, I need a couple of books and a good old coat. Jesus said, no, take nothing with you. But Jesus, I need to carry a little bit of a bottle of water with me. No, carry nothing with you because in my economy, you will be welcomed and God will bless you. That's the subversiveness of what we do here. The wideness of God's welcome invites us into the kingdom of heaven to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and show generous hospitality to all God's children. The word from Jesus about welcoming and the divine reward we all get, they all highlight what kingdom living is like. A life of hospitality make possible a community. It does. And I'll tell you this, there's another reason why I believe Jesus had to go into this instruction or this, this discourse about welcoming because welcoming them is a matter of life and death. Not having enough food, not having a cup of cold water could mean, could mean life or death. And I think that message is instructive to us this day. There are people who will come through these doors and our ability or our willingness to welcome them could mean life or death. It could mean life or death. There are people who will come through our door saying, I'm going to give this humanity one more chance to show me a kindness. I'm going to give you, God, one more chance to show me that life is possible. I'm going to give you one more chance to prove to me there's something worth living for. I'm going to go down to that church, and I'm going to give you one more chance. And that's going to be our chance. To the extent that we welcome them, to the extent that we open our hearts and our doors to them, we might be saving lives. 
But we accept the good news that the kingdom of heaven, the reign of God, is here right now. And when we sit at the feet of Jesus to accept the call to discipleship and learn from Jesus how we are to live, we become agents of Jesus, fully authorized to bear witness to be the presence of God. Oh, I don't think you heard me. Let me say that again. We are fully authorized. Fully authorized. I don't care what your church told you, the church you left told you. I don't care what these televangelists say on, the new, on, on television. I don't care what people have said about LGBTQ people. But when we accept the good news that the kingdom of heaven is here, we are fully authorized. To go and bear witness to Jesus in our midst and welcome all God's children. Oh, I don't think you heard me. You've been authorized. Authorized to open your hearts and your hands. To welcome all God's children and say you are loved and beloved of God. That's how we're going to build a beloved community that outranks everything that the world says about us. Imperative to welcome the most vulnerable. Oh, I don't want to hear. I'm just, uh, I'm kind of standoffish. I'm an introvert. No, no. It is an imperative that if we claim Jesus, it is an imperative that we welcome the most vulnerable. I don't want to hear, oh, but I need to speak to my friends today. No, no. I'm going to get in trouble now because I'm talking about you. I don't care. I don't care what it says. If we claim Jesus Christ, it is an imperative to welcome the most vulnerable. How we treat the most vulnerable among us reveals the extent to which we have accepted the call and commission to Jesus. And Jesus has made it clear. There were some of his disciples, some in the crowd who said, Jesus I just, I'm, I'm not very good at this welcoming thing. I'm, I, I don't know how to do it, but Jesus says, for those who refuse to accept or those who refuse to welcome, for those who refuse to serve the little ones, Jesus will say, depart from me. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Oh, it is an imperative that we must welcome. And here's the beauty. All oh, the reward we're going to get is going to be beyond imagination. The reward for accepting the little one is going to be beyond imagination. You see, I believe hospitality is infectious. You've heard the stories. People have gone into the marketplace and the person in front of them paid for their groceries. And in return, they decide to pay for the next person's growth. Hospitality is infectious. Everyone benefits from generous hospitality. The one who gives hospitality is rewarded with the presence and abundance of God in the form of a larger, more loving and safer beloved community. The one who receives hospitality experiences the acceptance and affirmation of God in the form of a new kind of family. Oh, it just spreads out. You can't get away from it. And as this newly constituted family of Jesus, as this beloved community that stands as an alternative to the coldness of the world, we, we bear witness that all who welcomes us and all those we welcome are part of God's body. And this is how I know that our mission will be successful. Yeah, we'll look at the numbers. We'll look at the attendance. We'll look at how much money we bring in. That's the human way of doing things. But our mission will be counted as a success when we open our hearts and our doors to all who come and they know by our welcome that they are beloved, that they will know that I have a community, I have a family now, that no matter what goes on around me, no matter how much I have been rejected, no matter how many times I have felt outside of God's grace, the success will be when those little ones, those vulnerable ones walk through those doors 
and are able to say, I have found my family.